Oh. The Swiss military industrial complex is very big, very powerful and very dangerous with the fingers stretching into politics and giving orders to the worldwide octagon police inside and outside Switzerland. And this is why all French policemen carry Swiss Zieg Sauer guns while in fact France itself makes excellent guns like Famas Manurin Unique and some other French brands. This here is the submachine gun of the future with 50% less recoil and 90% less muzzle climb because of the bolt action going down instead of backwards. It shows an incredible high rate of 1545 ACP high stopping power rounds and the difference between a 9mm or a 45 is being hit either with a baseball or a medicine ball. This gun is being produced in the US under US uh, patents. So Americans think it's US homemade and will buy it much quicker for that huge American gun market. But it belongs in fact to the Swiss military industrial complex with that Chris company based in Lyon, Switzerland and belongs to Gamma Research Technologies and the so-called US patents stand on the names of three Swiss nationals. So this is why the Chris Vector Super V has the Octagon Stampless V stamped on the weapon. This is Octagon's gun of the future with a V on it. Here on YouTube with the Swiss cross and it's called the, um, the username Chris Group, as you can see. Yeah. And in the about, about the user, they call themselves a defense conglomerate. Well, how true. Based in Switzerland. Well, there you go. And they sell it under www.chrisusa.com. And to produce the weapon in the USA, it's cheaper than in Switzerland. It's a bigger market and... Uh, there are no export um, conditions like uh, in, in Europe. So it is indeed a conglomerate from Octagon. One third of all American policemen carry Swiss Zieg Sauer guns, while the US, in fact, make excellent guns themselves. So here you can see it, according to Zieg Sauer, one third of US police use Zieg firearms. That, that's amazing. That's, you know. So this is in Wikipedia. There you can see that, Wikipedia. And it's probably elsewhere as well. Yeah. Uh, Zieg Sauer, Wikipedia. And uh, so the... Um, the young Americans being shot in uh, Ferguson, they were most probably shot with uh, with Swiss murder weapons. And uh, so any of the Americans getting shot by the police, and it's a couple of hundred every year, uh, one third, you know, are being shot by uh, with Swiss murder weapons. So that's hundreds of them are being killed by Octagon Switzerland. Well, I mean, the police is Octagon anyway. So you can sort of read the whole thing. Well, it says Germany founded, but um, it is uh, Swiss, actually. It says the parent Swiss arms. Um, it, it is a conglomerate, really. And they just want war in the war in the world for their Swiss banks. You know, the M the M11 pistol, the US military, etc. And here it says on Wikipedia the uh, the TDI vector. Um, and here it says in Neon, Switzerland. The origin is not Washington DC. It's from Neon. The country of origin is Switzerland. So I'll put in the links for you, you can read it all yourself. 
Sieg Sauer uses the same sly infiltration techniques as the Swiss banks do with their fancy parties for the rich to trap them into business. Therefore they have a thing simply called the Academy. A real octagon cons conspiracy tied in with big money, politics and octagons a military industrial complex. They bribe, use nepotism, serve cocaine and prostitutes, everything goes really, as in the case for all Swiss companies, and I've spoken to insiders personally in Switzerland who admitted this, as with a person from Swiss Frey Chocolate, who is now the manager for North America and living inside the US. Yeah, you can even read it here, even American policemen here from St. Louis. Well, isn't that in Missouri, in F Ferguson, who, uh, who are talking about the, uh, the corruption of, um, of the Swiss Academy and the Swiss Zig Zauer. They, they see it's something going on there. You know? Zig Zauer in bed with the Academy. Well, they are the Academy. So I'll put in the link for you. Here yeah, you can see, well this is the P228. It's not only the Navy SEALs using uh, Zig Zauer, but it's also the Army. So, what's happening to America, hey? You're being sold out. And it's said in Wikipedia that Zig Zauer is the, uh, is, is the biggest gun factory, you know, in the uh, with the biggest growth inside the US with a 50% growth <laughs> in the newspaper they only talk about China you know doing all the uh, the production for the United States but uh, here it is Switzerland and here it says they call it the tools of the trade well isn't that nice what kind of a trade a death trade a death cult isn't it so here it says, the, um, the St. Louis County Police, they, their primary, uh, primary duty gun is the Zig P229, Zig Zauer, here it says, a Swiss gun. And also for the, um, it's also being used for the St. Louis SWAT, as the whole article is about here, I think. Yeah, this is in tactical life, and it's all over. You can read it everywhere. You know, there's, there's a Swiss gun here. So those uh, those young Afro Americans in Ferguson, well, they were killed with Swiss guns. It says St. Louis County. Uh, they use Swiss guns to kill Americans. So how is this possible? You're being sold out to the enemy within. I mean, they, they are, it's Octagon. It's the Templars, and they use the guns from the motherland. They don't even want to use American guns, because they're not American. See, that's why they kill Americans. Yeah, tools of the trade, it says. And they're using Zig Zauer, yeah, Zig Zauer guns. Fantastic, isn't it? This is Octagon, and they use the uh, the tools of the trade, as they call it, you know, from, uh, it says, New Hampshire Navy Seals, oh, it's underneath, sorry, it says here, Navy Seals, Federal Air Marshals, Department of Homeland Security, as I told you. It's all Zig Zauer, it's all Swiss. This is Octagon. And they're in, in the government, they're all over everywhere. Yeah, the Swiss Army Standard. Schweizerische Industriegesellschaft. Swiss Industrial Company. Here it says, the Swiss Military Industrial Complex. As I told you. 
Even the DEA, the FBI, the French GGN and many others use Swiss Zieg 550 assault rifles for Octogon and from Octogon, while France or the US produce excellent, if not better, assault rifles. So why do you think this is? Well, I already told you in my video Octogon the Empire of Darkness how the world's Blue Army, also called Police, is a worldwide army consisting of Nazi Templars from Octogon, the Motherland. So of course they're proud to carry the weapons from the Motherland. Why else do you think this police monster kills so many Americans? You think they would do so if they were real Americans themselves? No, I don't think so, eh? So here you can see, here it says uh, Swiss Arms AG. Uh, from Switzerland, assault rifle, not bad for a neutral country, eh? Uh, so here you can you can you can see how many bullets you got in your mag. Think of the think of everything, like with the uh, telescopic sight, the grenade launcher on it. Why isn't it charming? The small version, put it under your jacket. Nice for terrorists. Well, the terrorists are called police anyway. So even even Germany, you look in Germany, the uh, uh, GSG nine, on special Einsatzkommando. They they still call it Einsatzgruppen, like in the like in the world like in the Second World War. And um, all over the world, even the, yeah, of course the Vatican has them. <laughs> Yeah, what's the Pope doing with an assault rifle? You know, we're going to ask ourselves that, eh? Yeah, the Drug Enforcement Administration, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, where the Swiss um, Gay Edgar, he was the, uh, the director for 50 years. And, um, well, here, France. That's France, the French Army, the National Gendarmerie Intervention Group, uh, etc., etc. Not bad for a neutral country. You know. Everybody has a neutral gun. And some more Swiss goodies of Zig Zauer. It says Switzerland, sniper rifle. It uses NATO ammunition, ammunition, so Switzerland is not in NATO, but well, why not use NATO ammunition? I mean, thus you can produce for the NATO and make some good business, like the Ruach is doing. Yeah, they call it Krieg Commando, the Swiss Zieg sniper, and Krieg it means war. Zig Zauer arms from Switzerland. Counter terrorists. Well, the terrorists, the police terrorists, they need counter terrorism. No, I don't understand that. Anybody does? So, this is Swiss precision of a neutral country to kill people. And here are some Zieg Zauer Swiss guns used by the UK, as you can see here, the P226 and 228, 229, just as the Americans are, they call the L10 and the L11, 7A1, oh what a name. So this is for the United Kingdom Special Forces, Royal Military Police, Close Protection, United Kingdom special forces, all branches. Oh. Switzerland, a neutral country, eh? So with this, they call they kill Muslims and other people, and oh, nice. There is indeed a worldwide conspiracy against mankind, and it carries carries Swiss weapons. That utopia in the Alps, founded by the Templars, and where the world's financial elite hides its money. 
and where every dictator and drugs dealer brings his crime money. Just watch how Larry Silverstein insured the World Trade Center short before 9-11. Yes, in Switzerland at the Swiss Re or reinsurance company the Schweizerische Rückversicherungsgesellschaft from Zurich. And I told you the Templars they were they they founded the Swiss banks with the the Templars crash. And what do what do we see here? The Templars V all over upside down and like a V. Just as we can see on all the tanks in now in the Middle East and all over. So if you have any doubts, well there's a lot of V's here as well, in fact, and a lot of triangles here. Uh, this is pharaonic. It's um, it's Templar stuff. And in both uh, uh, 007 Octopussy and um, Ocean's Twelve, they show the uh, the Swiss Re. And the guy lives in Switzerland, and he played Simon Templar in The Saints. And um, even 007, it, it's always about Switzerland. And uh, with this, uh, the Prince of Darkness, I showed you in one of the other films. So here's your Swiss Re. It's all occult. And it's Swiss. Swiss. It's Templar stuff. So here it is. This is from Wikipedia. It says, Swiss Re was the lead insurer of the World Trade Center during the September 11 attacks, which led to an insurance dispute with the owner. Silverstein Properties and um, a reinsurance is an insurance bought by another insurance company. These are usually very big insurance companies who can afford to pay billions like only the Swiss can, profitably backed up by Nazi gold in collaboration with the Swiss Nazi banks. So per definition a reinsurance company like Swiss Re is typical octagon by the Nazi Templars, and I just show you this the V symbols. It's all there, and uh, here it says Zurich, Switzerland. Um, it, well, it's, it's a reinsurance company based in Zurich, Switzerland, from 1863, founded in 1863. Well, the name says it. Says it. Swiss Re. And this is their logo. One, two, three for Isis, Horus and Seth. There's three, it's always Isis, Horus and Seth. I don't know what... Well, if I think about this one, I'll find it. So, I put in the link for you, Wikipedia. They're always in it, everywhere. They're somewhere, they're in it. They're the only ones who can organize this big against humanity. No one else can. Watch how trails of John Kennedy's murder lead to Swiss Permindex of Basel, where the Bank of International Settlements is. And if I translate the word, or you know, immediately the part per, where the word pharaoh is from, and it means the house, immediately it's caught my eye. So if I take this apart, it says. Per, the house, the royal house, the mind, a pharaonic mind, and ex, meaning out of. So per mindex, it means out of a pharaonic mind. And it says, it, has to, it, it belonged to the uh, front organization for the Central Intelligence Agency. And, uh, well, Gay Edgar, the head of the FBI, he, you know, he had to do with the... Uh, he, he was the head of the FBI when Kennedy was killed. It's all octagon. It's Switzerland everywhere and always they got their dirty little fingers in it somehow and somewhere. I put it in the link for you. So this was sent to me by some very good persons who watch my videos about Permindex, about the Swiss Re and um, about The Voice which is coming up now. You'll be surprised. So 
Now let's have a look if you all recognize the voice of this guy here with the Swiss cross on his on his chest. And um, some very good person, a very good person, send it to me. Um, I told you the Ku Klux Klan, it is Swiss. And this guy here is most probably a descendant of uh, Swiss Phileas Walder. The guy who gave Albert Pike all the all the orders. They were proud here as slaves. God, nigga, the clan is getting bigger. I want to see a Swiss system. And the guy, he's selling his little bottles with the same the same Swiss cross on it, the Ku Klux Klan cross. Yeah, super male vitality with the, uh, the 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 Ku Klux Klan Swiss cross on it, of the Templars. So super male. This makes you a super male, uh, like a like a super male Templar or what? So the voice you just heard is most likely a descendant of Phileas Walder from Switzerland, who founded the Swiss Ku Klux Klan. See my video about it, and gave all the orders to. Albert Pike working on World War III against the Muslims and this fear-mongering against Islamic State is, is exactly what Jonesy does with his Swiss cross all over. And it's very interesting that uh, already Albert Pike in this letter he makes a difference between political and religious Zionism. So he's only against political Zionism which is actually secular and uh, it just says well now we have to think of ourselves and defend ourselves whereas the religious uh, Zionism is um, a word by this thing called God who uh, foretold and promised that he will bring the Jews all together in Jerusalem in Zion so they are actually there are two um, quite different things and this guy already makes a difference between both of them so this is very it's a very important part that Albert Pike he is only against the political Zionism and not the religious Zionism very important just watch the front lines here of the Western Front during World War one it goes all the way from the North Sea to, yes, Switzerland. While one million people died during the Battle of the Somme and were sent to a certain death as cannon fodder for the Horus Matrix, well, don't you think it would have been less costly on human resources to just make a little detour through Switzerland and attack the enemy in the back than having nine million soldiers and seven million civilians die over the same not changing front line during four long bloody years but on both sides both German and uh, allied just a few generals wanted European men just to die in the Horus matrix by Octagon and the Pharaohs why well Right after World War I came the gay twenties in the original sense of the word before those other ones kidnapped our word. And in these roaring twenties dancing the Charleston women were loosened up to be preyed upon by the fair aristocracy with all those Europeans dead. Just as the sexual revolution of the sixties right after World War II with all those men dead. And um, this is how European women celebrated the death of their man, with nine million European men dead immediately after the war. And this is what a war is about. You kill the man, take their women, the land and the cattle. Only Pharaoh takes the key positions and then have the man kill each other before grabbing the winner's prize. Stupid humanity. If nine million soldiers were going to die anyway, they could have just battled only a few hundred generals. 
but maybe this here is the general, Isis. But nobody wants to make the first sacrifice. Everyone, single selfish person, just thinks of himself. And this is why stupid mankind and a vast majority has lost the battle against that minority of the enemy within. Stupid, selfish mankind. And in fact, the, uh, the 20s, as you can see here, it was very, very pharaonic, Egyptian-based, the clothing and everything. And this was also the time they all went to Egypt, you know, like uh, Carter and doing, uh, uh, do some digging. The Isis look of the Roaring Twenties. And because of Isis and the Pharaohs, just right after World War I and World War II, the Sixties and the Roaring Twenties, now they want to kill the Patriarchy. Isis wants to kill the Patriarchy uh, with those Isis, you know, the Isis uh, is Islamists. Um, it's all the same thing, really. The Battle of the Somme started on July 1st, 1916. A battle between the German Empire and the British Empire with Australian, Canadian, Indian, New Zealand and South African troops who lost 60,000 men on that very first day of the Battle of July 1st, which is still called the worst day of the British Army. And at the same time, also in 1916, also costing a million lives, the Battle of Verdun took place, just a little bit more to the east, between the French and the Germans. So two million European men just died in a few months' time, who were meant to die by the fair aristocracy and octagon the military wing and right after all the women just a month after they started to dance the charleston and be happy and uh, undress so here's once more the western front here's the sea well you couldn't pass here so in only two or three months, two million men died here. Here Verdun, here the Somme, just right next to each other actually. And here Switzerland. So why couldn't two million men just, just make a little detour here? And not even the Germans did it, and not the French, not the English, not the Americans. And why is this? This little country here, you, you know, you could just squeeze through, you know. It was all meant to be. If this little country of nothing like could stop millions of men, I mean they, they they must have they must have something to do with it, you know? It's the brain here. This little country, you know, and at the time it was only four million people, I think they had a couple of hundred thousand soldiers, and that's all. Nothing more. I mean, this is unbelievable. I mean, this is... <laughs> it's all a lie, you see. Yeah, and the generals knew. That's Octogon. Just look how Hitler resembles the other fellow here. And both Kaiser Wilhelm and Hitler visited the Swiss Ulrich Wille family just before the outbreak of both world wars. And the Ulrich family in Switzerland, they are married into the von Bismarck family. It's all the aristocracy. And both this guy here visited Ulrich Wille Jr. in 1923 and afterwards and he got financed by them and this one here too just before the outbreak of the uh the first world war he visited the ulrich wille family and ulrich wille senior next to zurich and look at the ears i mean this is 
same family. This, these heirs and these are the same. It's, it's the same descendants. And it's all connected to Switzerland. And here again, during World War II, the Swiss military industrial complex was all geared up to the German command with the Swiss railroads forced into service of the German war economy, with Switzerland providing raw materials as an intermediary uh, for Nazi gold and looted goods, thus Switzerland prolonging World War II with at least two years through Swiss, Swiss companies of the Swiss military industrial complex as Burla Erlikon and many others. Now you can read the whole story, put in the links for you. Just punch pause. And this is an official US report from that time and it says the Swiss uh, military industrial complex they were almost totally geared up to the German demand and it says also somewhere how they prolonged the world war with at least two years we're living the same era now as just before the war here in Switzerland it's very bad where today's names are Ruach, Swiss P, Emotec, Pilatus Brugge on Tomet, Zig Zauer, Chris, etc. Same old story, repeating again. And nobody does anything. Put in the links for you. And now, Octogon, gearing up for war, is a very bad omen indeed. The Swiss Octogon has their dirty little fingers in all crimes against humanity. I want to see a Swiss system. He's taking pride here as slaves. The God nigger, the clan is getting bigger. What? And a, a good person just sent me this. This is a very, it's an old painting from 1566 from Switzerland. And it says here, an armada of metallic and black spheres invaded Basel, Switzerland. Baal where the Swiss Bank of International Settlements is, everything. I, I saw it before once. And, uh, well, I don't know what they are. But they're not normal people. They're cold. They don't seem to have any normal emotions uh, of uh, human compassion or anything else. While at the same time they're like playing and pretending, you know, to have all the NGOs here, like the Red Cross, well, who do absolutely nothing really. Uh, there were concentration camps in Switzerland with Americans in it. They didn't do anything. In my case, people being tortured here in Switzerland, they do and they don't do anything. In Auschwitz, they said, well, the Red Cross said, well, everything is okay, they're having a good time. So this is the video here on this channel here and um, it's on 25 minutes and 18 seconds you can see it here and here it is again on Google Images if you just punch um, the um, um, the links in uh, in Google Images it pops out Look, it looks like there's all like Swiss crosses falling from the sky, yeah. And uh, well, I mean, I've I've never seen such cold people. You know, they don't seem to have any human values. You know, of humanity or humanitarian or uh, it's all about money. It's cold and calculations. They want to rule the world, and uh, they do. And here's some more about what happened in Basel, uh, just at the end of the Middle Ages. And it was also in Basel, Switzerland, where they kidnapped my child 12 years ago. I never saw him again. I don't know if he's alive. No idea. That's Switzerland.
Oh. It has been announced in the international newspapers that Muslims are being killed and soon even more will be killed with Swiss weapons as the German army is going to supply the Kurdish Peshmerga in Iraq with Swiss weapons and Swiss precision ammo. Because the German army uses Swiss high precision ammunition from Octagon Switzerland whose RUAG R-U-A-G, state-run armament manufacturer, has the largest financial turnover of the entire European world of ammunition dealers and is the world's fifth largest small arms producer like handguns, assault rifles and sniper guns. Not bad for a so-called neutral country, eh? Well... Swiss's neutrality swindle knows very well that this way dirty businesses can be done with all parties and not just one side of the conflict just as Swiss's arms are, are sold to Wahhabi Saudi Arabia and Wahhabi Qatar who gave them to all sorts of wannabe jihadi military groups as ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, the Taliban or you name it. So it was today, you can read that, today, that's uh, September the 7th, 2014, or yesterday. And uh, there you can read it. This, this company here in Switzerland is the biggest ammunition producer of the entire Europe. That's Ruach. Amotech. This is Nazi Templar stuff, folks. This is Octagon. They're the biggest in Europe. This small country, they've got the biggest ammunition manufacturer. You read it, and there's a lot more interesting things here in it. I mean, this is Octagon. The Swiss are a bunch of very organized criminals with the country. And uh, here you can read it, that um, it says, yeah. The Swiss German Ruach Group is definitely Europe's biggest provider of military and law enforcement ammunition and the global top player in the field. Basically, no competitor has the skills and the manufacturing capabilities to cover the range of military and police application that Ruach products do while at the same time offering other typically military-oriented products from hand grenades to mortar and art artillery shells, well, etc, etc. Um, they are the top providers of uh, uh, snipe sniping. You read the whole article. This is Octagon. Not bad for a neutral country, eh? Not bad at all. Well, it's just sly for the it's for business. You say you're neutral, you know, so they can provide both sides with the with goodies. And Swiss hand grenades are being used by the jihadists to kill Syrians and Shia Muslims. Swiss Movec armored vehicles are being used in Saudi Arabia to crush to crush pro protest marches under those Swiss wheels. Swiss Pilatus airplanes get used for genocides as in Darfur. Swiss sniper rifles kill protesters at Maidan Square in the Ukraine, as you can see here. And Swiss precision sniper ammo sold to the Wahhabi Emirates found their way into the hands of Iraqi insurgents and the Taliban killing and maiming and wounding many GI US soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan exterminated with Swiss precision. And I'll bet you that these sniper rifles here used in Ferguson, Missouri that they were holding Swiss precision sniper bullets in the chamber looking down the barrel at unarmed US civilians. Yes, Swiss Ruach Armaments are even having factories in the US in Tampa 
and they are the number one in the world on sniper tools like Zeke guns and Ruach sniper ammo, even used by NATO special forces and worldwide octagon police units and police anti or sh should I say pro-terror squads including the US of A. Well, you can see this is the American police, you know, they, they like these Swiss um, ammunition. There's a new ammunition company, they established a new company in Tampa, you know, Swiss Precision. That's what I like. And I told you, Octagon, they have a fifth column all over the world. I mean, how could it be that, the, you know, the US cowboy state, you know, if I could say this, uh, that they have, um, you know, the, the number one handgun state of the world, that they're not even using uh, American uh, cartridges, you know. Can't they manufacture them themselves, you know? It says in Tampa, Florida, Ruach Ammo Tech USA Incorporated is located. They even got a factory there. You know, they're everywhere. This is Octogon. It's part of a fifth, a fifth column of Swiss sleeper agents all over. Otherwise, the, um, the American police, which is not really American, it's Octagon, they would not use a foreign ammunition. The Americans are quite capable to make the ammunition themselves, eh? So you see? The Swiss don't wage war but their Swiss weapons do. Apart from the worldwide operating Swiss Octagon Assassination Units as the SS Einsatzgruppen by the Swiss Colonel Karl Jäger and the Jäger Report, and even today in and outside Switzerland mostly hiding in disguise of fifth column sleeper cells of the, uh, of the Swiss Nazi Templars. And uh, in the next, uh, some one of the next uh, well, you'll see. So this is one of the world's, uh, or maybe for some areas, the mo the biggest manufacturer of um, ammunition. And this is not a peaceful people. Why would a peaceful, so-called neutral, peaceful people make all these weapons and so they can kill people? I think this gun was used in Maidan place. You see this little spare part underneath? This is, I think it's a, uh, well, I don't know. But this is, um, it, it looks like the gun they use in Maidan to kill Ukrainians. Um, well. Since 18, 1863, well, it's old, I mean, and they got, uh, you know, factories in the USA, in Germany, Sweden, Hungary, even in Malaysia, they're all over. Well, this is, this is the real Switzerland. And they're not neutral at all, and they've never been, they, they have never been neutral. They never were. It says, Switzerland's army doesn't go to war, but its military equipment does. In 2011, Saudi Arabia and Swiss Piranha tanks to crack down on protests in Bahrain. Libyan rebels use Swiss ammunition against Muammar Gaddafi's troops. And Syrian rebels have been throwing Swiss hand grenades against President Bashar al-Assad soldiers. Uh, Swiss sniper rifles were used against civilians on Kiev's Maidan Square. Many died in brutal police actions. Uh, Switzerland, a neutral country at the heart of Europe, known for an active war, well, etc. Um, yeah, well, you can read the whole thing here. And now they are going to export to the Kurds Swiss ammunition through Germany. The Swiss always export their arms through another country you know, to, to hide things either through Germany well Germany has always been their base or either through the uh, the United Arab Emirates and uh, Qatar 
where they shifted their banking, um, the weight of, of their banking business to. From 2008 on, they uh, applied for a banking license for Qatar. And this is the same year when the IRS and the US uh, Justice Department started to put pressure on the Swiss criminal Nazi banks. So it all fits together. You know, the Swiss, I, I told you, the Swiss banks, there's a reason that they went to Qatar. Well, the, the reason is coming out. You know, they're selling ammunition and guns to Qatar. And it's a Wahhabi state. You know, they want an Islamic state. So who's the first one who, who gets the ammunition? Uh, and the, the, the high precision Swiss ammunition to kill US soldiers and and Shia Muslims and etc. Well I understand these these guys they want their, their own Islamic State and I've got no problems with that. But the Swiss shouldn't get rich on it. And they shouldn't oppose, you know, like people, you know, peoples one against another. The Sunnis and the Shiites should just get together and, and you know be Muslims like. But I guess the Templars in the Western world they don't want peace amongst uh, Muslims. They want to set them up once one against another, you know, divide and rule, Shia against Sunnis. So it says this year on March 13, this is 2014, March 13. Uh, Switzerland has eased its restrictions on arms exports and you can all see what happened Maidan place in the Ukraine now they're sending it to the Kurds and they already exported ammunition and guns to um, to Qatar you can see the results it's going very quick now so Swiss weapons and Swiss high precision sniper ammo kill Muslims on both sides, both Shia and Sunni. And these Swiss SVP, Swiss People's Party, show how Mr. and Mrs. Swissy really feel about Muslims and Islam. And 80% of the Swiss population votes uh, this SVP right extremist Nazi party which actually is the biggest Nazi party in the world. Switzerland has the highest gun ownership per capita in the world and they're into precision killing from a safe distance. And this is what the whole damn place is about. Murder from a distance and delegate premeditated crimes against humanity from a safe distance from their octagon utopia in the Alps. And these are the kind of uh, images and posters they show in Switzerland. In the streets, I mean, it's horrible, in the streets and um, in the media, newspapers, on television, uh, nobody does a thing against it. Really nobody. There's nobody who is. There's non, no Swiss who really is against it. Some of them, they do it, do it pro forma, you know as if there would be some Swiss who are like left left hand left wing and who are against it. So this is how the Swiss really think about Muslims. You see, you know, it's quite humiliating showing, you know, the black guy on the back of a Swiss and the Muslim girl on the back of a Swiss. It's very humiliating. It's it's bad. So this is how they really think about immigrants and Muslims. But, I mean, selling a lot of guns and ammo, then they don't have any problems with it, selling it to the Muslims, to both parties. And um, probably their aim is, well, uh, the Swiss aim is, uh, let's have the Muslims kill each other. So they won't come to Switzerland, so that's why they sell it uh, to the jihadist guys. Uh, through uh, Qatar, Saudi Arabia and the United Emirates and um, they also sell it to the other side um, selling and selling them now to Germany and they come at the Kurdish side so they can kill on the the, uh, the ISIS jihadist uh, guys so it's it's evil this is plain evil
This is octagon behind it. You hear nothing else in Switzerland about how innovation brings them to the top. Just as having a number one market position on sniper ammo, zipping worldwide towards numerous premature death cases. Well, I know one of the seven principles of success and the innovation. No conscience. And every neighbour around me in the village has several guns and assault rifles in their homes, except me, the foreigner. And this video I'm making here is very dangerous and not allowed by the Swiss censorship laws of the Octagon dictatorship giving facts about this super large Swiss Ruach gun dealer company standing above all laws both internationally and domestically. Hey Swissy, how do you like me innovating the world with facts about what you've been hiding? And in fact this Swiss innovation consists only on a strategical business level of creating a commercial monopoly on the market that nobody else has through inventions by foreign workers in Switzerland whose patents automatically belong to the Swiss multinational company. Now let's be honest, next to slight banking, the Swiss never made any great inventions, nor any valuable contributions to mankind. Never. The Swiss neighbor was testing his machine gun just around the corner. Switzerland is in a tight grip of ultra right wing fascists, and nobody really cares about that in the entire fascist state in the Alps. And like Hitler's little helpers, the entire Swiss population seems to agree with total fascism. As on March 6, 2014, the all-powerful Swiss military industrial complex had the restrictions eased on Swiss weapon exports. And we can see more and more people getting killed worldwide with Swiss high-precision weaponry all over. You can see the Swiss weaponry being used all over to kill innocent, unarmed people worldwide. And this was in the Ukraine. The entire country is all about fascism, corruption, lies and nepotism. In order to achieve big business at all cost, the Swiss military industrial complex says, well wait. I know some SVP People's Party guys in Parliament who stand on our side, which is nationalism, guns and money. The main thing, the main things Nazism has always been about, really. Therefore, hundreds of unarmed Ukrainian civilians had to die, get maimed or wounded at Maidan Square in 2014 because of the Swiss Nazi money-making hillbillies or short just Swiss billies. Well these people are dead due to Swiss arms. Yes it has come out that Swiss high precision NATO Cal 308 sniper rifles by the Swiss weapons manufacturer Brugger und Tomet, jawohl, 
of the canton of Bern were used to murder unarmed civilians standing up for their freedom and against tyranny. Well, here's the famous Swiss Maidan gun. Here it is. You can read it all here. Oh, what a neutral country, eh? Look. You can see the Ukraine. They make the guns under license. You know, they're now being manufactured, you know, to kill Russians. And remember how I've shown you the dictators Yanukovych, Swiss chalet built by Swiss carpenters and full of occult pharaonic symbols from the motherland in the Alps. And how there's a very large Swiss fifth column that emigrated to Bessarabia in the Ukraine, like Octogon going for all key positions as the Berkut killer cops or Berkut, the killer cops units, a name having the same sound as Bern, Berkut, Bern, B-E-R, from the canton of the Bear and Blackwater Bear Claw, the very same canton where the sniper rifles came from. And there's talk that neo-Nazis also participated in the snipings on it at the Maidan place with those Swiss high-precision rifles and that Gladio was involved. Well, let me tell you that Gladio is and has always been one of Octagon's branches of this secretive Swiss conglomerate and neo-Nazism is just the very thing Swissy enjoys most. Let me read the old article. Sponge balls. This is a fifth column in the Ukraine. Oh. There they are. Hello, put your hand up. Well, there it is. Neo Nazi. They're secretive as Switzerland. Many Swiss emigrated to the Ukraine to Bessarabia and they have chosen Swiss arms. So what do you think they are? You really think they're not Swiss? Now you can read the whole article. There you go. And in order to maintain the Swiss neutrality swindle, before this year's new laws the Swissy just bypassed laws by having Swissy's guns manufactured under license, like in the Ukraine and many, many other places, who produce now many of them the weapons to kill and murder Russians in the Donetsk area, the province. So this new law was just a technicality, really, but effectively showing that severe times are coming ahead. So here you can read the whole article. Critics outbreak over easings um, of uh, arms exports. Why well, not in Switzerland? And if they do pretend to be outraged, it's just theatre, really. It's just acting. Because they want to be known for being neutral, you see. They all agree. These are Hitler's little helpers, you know, or big helpers, I'd, I'd say. Business before ethics, well, that's very, very true. It's just business as usual. This video is not so much about if or when Osama bin Laden died, because Governments lie and hide everything. This video is about the Swiss involvement in his death, presuming the official version and Swiss weapon reused. I can tell you though that Osama was part of the aristocracy, from an extremely wealthy family with close ties to the royal family of Saudi Arabia. And this is why everyone in Afghanistan and elsewhere nicknamed him the Prince or the Emir. And you can see it's all one family. 
these these old pharaohs. Yeah, here are the Saudis here. Yeah, some other pharaohs here. Yeah, the, the the big pharaoh here. It's all one family of pharaohs. And um, o Osama, he, he didn't really like what he saw. So, this is the true story of Osama. So then Osama, he knew about these things and even worse. You know, here you can see that this is the tip of the iceberg, what happened later on, holding hands, two pharaohs here, all of royal descent, and all related to the British royal house, etc. You know, they're all in bed together. And here you can see the arse of uh, President Obama, another pharaoh, and, you know, here are the other pharaohs. And, um, yeah. So Osama didn't like it at all, all the lies while the uh, Afghani people were really suffering and still are. Of course this happened later on, but you know, he knew other things. Yeah? And there's Bush holding a an Arab sword, uh, together with the Saudi royals of the Saudi king. And they even look alike. This is not the same identical man, but it's the same bloodline. The same pharaohs, only Osama was the better one. He understood and he was appalled. The same lean, long fingers, long lean hands, not very masculine at all. Same bloodline. And it's in that genetic, you're like doing the same gestures like and he had a rare genetic disease called Marfan and a typical pharaonic bent spine due to the pharaonic incest. Just as most rare genetic diseases are indications for the pharaonic bloodlines, just as widespread amongst the European nobility, also pharaonic descent. You know, I have to remind you of the Tsars who had the uh, uh, hemophilia. You know, the, uh, they got cut and they, um, the, the blood didn't stop. You see, he curved spine, narrow face. Charles de Gaulle, he had the same thing. Another pharaoh. Uh, this here is Abraham Lincoln. Another pharaoh. And they're all related to the, uh, to the kings. And um, Rachmaninov. Uh, increased height, lengthened arms, long fingers, it says, long fingers, like, um, like Obama, uh, and um, Osama, it says, long fingers and toes, disproportionately, I mean, look at Obama's hands, you know, it's all pharaohs, uh, the power of the gene, the Marfan syndrome, In every European royal family, they have some sort of a genetic disease. That's why they're so interested in it, you know, to uh, genetic, uh, you know, with science, you know, scientific analysis and, uh, yeah. So Osama was or is either a pharaonic spy and traitor for the elite or he was a black sheep, rogue pharaonic revolutionary fed up and rejected by his own kind as Lady Diana was. It was the latter of both. Sometimes pharaonic offspring loves mankind and then get brutally murdered by their own race similar to the story of Jesus also dying for his love for mankind by God the Pharaoh who sacrificed his only son because of the incest getting offspring was so difficult for them. Yes, our masters have indeed internal wars only known to few and hidden to mankind by those smiling presidents watching the murder show live on TV and enjoy the murder liquidation of a pharaonic brother who betrayed the pharaonic idea 
of their new world order, world domination over mankind. And uh, here you can see him with a lion together, Osama bin Laden with a lion, because the lion is the symbol of the pharaonic dignity. He was called the prince, but he was a prince. And he gave up his life and wealth for the love of man. I mean, who saw him driving around in a Rolls Royce or in Mercedes? He was always walking around in old rags. So this is the true story of Bin Laden. And if he really would have been responsible for 9-11, they would have caught him alive and waterboarded him, but instead they overboarded him to completely erase the pharaoh of Afghanistan, a good pharaoh who wanted to help <coughs> the Afghan people against the plans of the evil pharaohs and created the only state in the world not under their control, which is the same thing now happening under ISIS, Islamic State. And this is why our masters sacrificed more than 3,000 people on 9-11 to stop Osama from spreading not really pharaonic states over the world, using lies and deception for their goals, just as today's with today with fake James Foley beheadings and an ISIS Islamic State witch hunt who are absolutely no threat to the West but only a threat to our masters and in a way ISIS is the legacy of Osama bin Laden who was a saint helping others sacrificing a life in wealth for it and never killed a man in his life a pious Muslim who only prayed when the Navy Salesmen of Death by Octogon came to get him. I think it really happened like that because there are too many witnesses like the people in the house of Bin Laden where he got killed. I think the British royal pharaohs and the pharaoh of the White House wanted to ritual murder him like Diana. But King Abdullah from Saudi Arabia had the final word in it to just eradicate the memory of the pharaoh without a grave and feed him to the sharks. He openly says, Ein Volk, ein Reich, ein Führer! So that means one people, one mixed people all over the world, Ein Reich, one empire, one pharaonic new world order, and Ein Führer one American president, you know, and, and a president over the whole world. So they say it, Ein Reich, one empire. And if you try to make your own empire or have a state within, the, within a state, then they'll kill you. So they were already telling us it's right in our faces, the new world order. Ein Reich, ein Volk, ein Führer, this is the new world order. And the Germans thought, oh, he's meaning us, well, we're so delighted. We are the German chosen people, you know. And actually, it's also, you know, like against the Jews, because they were having uh, a state within a state. They were just doing their own things, you know, and just like the Turks in Berlin do now. There's a lot of them who don't even speak German. And it's like a state within a state. And the Pharaoh won't accept it. He will kill him. So Osama had built a state within the Islamic State, with the ex Islamic State in Afghanistan. And the pharaohs will never allow this. This is also one of the reasons of killing all the Jews in World War II, who lived their way in their own community as a state within. And now they live under pharaoh's rule and command in Israel which the ultra-Orthodox understand very well, being the reason they burn Israeli flags in Jerusalem and elsewhere, all over the world. Osama also stopped the opium drugs trade, which the CIA, or Cocaine Import Agency, immediately put back in service after the 9-11 false flag operation by Octagon. So here you see the official statistics of the United Nations, here it says the Taliban rule, 
between this Obama, uh, Osama, sorry. <laughs> they look the same and they sound the same. <laughs> so, uh, 1996 until, uh, so here, the Taliban, in 2000, Taliban bans poppy growing. And then it got all, it got very dangerous for Afghanistan, Osama bin Laden and the Taliban. And in 2001, you know, there was it's zero, no more opium. Uh, this is paradise. I mean, th this is what our so-called authorities, our so-called the DEA and all these liars, all these politicians, they are so-called fighting for. Well, the Taliban did it. And it's also one of the reasons, together with the state in the state, I mean, you don't make a state in a state where the, uh, the CIA and uh, these pharaohs who are parasiting on us and the Swiss banks and octagon, you don't just decide, you know, not to make any more opium. And it gets very, very dangerous. So and this is what happened. No more opium. Opium. 9-11 happened. You see? And here's 2002, Whoa, the Americans were there, U.S. NATO control, and it went, bah, it went up. You know? So this is what Osama bin Laden did. So, I mean, this is enough. You know who he is. You know, he, was, he, he, didn't, he didn't want this for human beings and our children and all our, the Western European big cities. I mean, look at it. These are the proofs, you know. Don't believe the newspapers. Don't believe the U.S. Navy SEALs and all these, these Rambos killers. And, you know, here it says, 2001, it was all down, you know. So then did this for this 9-11 uh, false flag and bye-bye Afghanistan. And um, so they had to kill him, you know. So if you want more proofs, I mean, this is Osama bin Laden. This is this this here, what you see here, this is what he achieved or what he wanted to do. He probably gave a lot of his money to the poor Afghani farmers, you know, to feed them so they wouldn't grow any more uh, puppies and uh, heroin. You know. We're all being lied to. It's it's all one lie. It says, um, and now it says it. So this is from the UN. You know, it's not some Muslims or Islamic states. You know, who's writing this down here. It says now Afghanistan produces ninety percent of the world's opium. So from zero Taliban, Taliban control, Osama bin Laden, zero percent. It went up, you know, by um, America ruling over Afghanistan to 90%. You know, and all these, you know, it makes people dependent, you know, and it, it's, it's a huge, you know, business. You know, Swiss banks and, I mean, Switzerland too. Switzerland, I, I show you the film that, uh, you know, the, the safest place in Switzerland is just next to the police station. You know, I, show, I showed you the needles just next to the police station and all the... That's where they are. That's where they feel safest, you know. They, they, the, 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 the Swiss police, they are the biggest drug dealers. And the DEA and the, and the, the CIA. And uh, Switzerland is the center of drugs anyway in Europe. They come from all over. Uh, you can even get it for free, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. They have um, offices where you can get it for free. I, I might go there one day and film it for you, you know. I know exactly where it is. So, believe me, Osama bin Laden was a very good man. And not only for the Muslims, but also for the West. No more drugs, you see, it's empty. You know, it's like no more World Trade Center here, you know. Well, that, that was, that's what it was. This is 2000 and, um, yeah, 2000. 2001. No more, no more World Trade Center, you know, the rest are still there. <laughs> he was a good man, like Lady Diana. He never killed anybody in his life. And he didn't want Western kids, you know, to die of all these 
all this poison, all this pharaonic poison where the Swissies get rich of. This was not a bad man. Did you ever see Bin Laden standing like this, you know, protecting the poppy fields, the opium, for to kill our children? No. American soldiers protecting the opium, killing our children, or Navy SEALs doing that? Yes. Special forces in a poppy field, opium all over, who cares? The standard handgun, PDW or sidearm of almost all Western and NATO special forces is a Zig Zauer automatic SLG from Switzerland. And for every German speaking person it's obvious that the Zig gun is being pronounced as Zig meaning victory, as in the Nazi slogan Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil, which has to be repeated in that special hypnotizing rhythm invented by Swiss octagon of the Nazi Templars as a Nazi lullaby to suck all Germans into the Swiss Nazi agenda. Sieg Heil means hail to victory, just as that victorious Swiss Sieg gun which has therefore been adopted by the US Navy SEALs. And in the military, they preferably use the tough sounding name MK-25 for the Sieg Sauer P-226, or what we, would, what we would simply call the Swiss Nation tool. Now there it is, Sieg Sauer from Switzerland. Killing Osama bin Laden. So apparently, you also have the Mark 24. And Swiss Billy has stamped a little anchor on it as well. Otherwise, you wouldn't know it was a Navy gun. Because, like guns usually do, it sinks actually. Here, you can see a little anchor. Why well, isn't that charming, isn't it? Uh, that's what making business and making money is all about. This is real sly sales psychology, so the owner or user of the gun can identify himself with his gun. I'm a Navy SEAL because I've got a little anchor on my special forces little pistol. The word Zauer means asset or angry in German, altogether adding up to Sieg Zauer giving away that charming translation of angry victory in English. And angry it is, spitting fire upon defenseless civilians after that ancient Swiss tradition. So you can see all those guys, you know, like bragging about it. They have a Swiss gun that killed uh, the same one that killed Bin Laden and with a little anchor on it, you know, like from the Navy SEALs. Oh, isn't that lovely, eh? Thanks to Swissy, we got the saints killed. And those brave Navy SEAL warriors so heroically shot the unarmed Osama Bin Laden with that Swiss gun for all brave octagon warriors victoriously slotting the old man while he was asleep with his family and children. So on May 2nd, 2011, again a Swiss gun was used to murder five unarmed family members and UBL himself, who never had anything to do with 9-11. On the contrary. So, you can see some more about it here. All those lovely Swiss guns of the Swiss military industrial complex of the Nazi Templars. And some years ago, our masters called it collateral damage. Now, they don't even mention it at all anymore because everyone has become so used to all those murdered Muslims. And here, Swissy even mentions it, you know, 
with an anchor on the left side of the slide is the official sidearm of the SEALs. I wouldn't be surprised that Swiss, you know, is already selling it with like UBL stamped in it. Not talking about uh, the children they murdered and the uh, and the women in there and all those people sleeping, you know, to stamp UBL in it. Well, that will be a good sales, eh? When Osama was dead, the seals coded Geronimo, Geronimo, Geronimo into Obama's TV room, where he was enjoying the show, thus referring to the skull and bones of the previous owner, now lying in the dark and sinister dungeon of Yale, where they speak more German than English. Swiss German. From all these lethal incidents and state assassinations, the statistics show that Swiss guns have been primarily used on unarmed civilian tangos. It says Zig Zauer, Swiss engineer made in the US of A. You know, under license. But it's, in fact, the Swiss military industrial complex. It's like a conglomerate, you know, they got their multinational and uh, they're all over. They're even taking over the US, you know, well, I mean, uh, there you go, Shooters Magazine. Now, three years later, after UBL allegedly died, all sorts of stories have popped out and hundreds of ex-seals who all gave the fatal shot personally and some of them say that a German HK416 uh, 223 Cal assault rifle was used, which is most likely government disinfo. First of all, if you clear a house, this is called CQB or close quarter battle. And what you hate most is going in there with a high velocity weapon, which bullets go through people and walls and ricochet all the time, flying in all directions through the entire building, having a blue on blue, hitting yourself and your mates and the children. So you post the rifle guys outside and enter with your PDW or sidearm, which is the Swiss MK25, Mark 25, for SEALs and practically all other NATO teams using a ZIG. This way you don't need 15 kilo or ballistical gear in which you can't move, but you go in with a light 3A body armor. It must have been defined a civilian target with the kids and parents sleeping, so by the book you use no more than a pistol or for move, also for movability, and no one will grab your rifle barrel sticking around the corner and hang on it. And you don't use a laser light or um, on an assault rifle at all. That's for pistols. A uh, 223 Cal high velocity round has about six times the kinetic energy of a 9mm and will punch a neat hole into a thick wild boar skull. But if it hits the human skull, it will crack and tear half the front and most of the backside right off because of the spin. So there was a neat 9mm hole on UBL's head of a Swiss Zeek. Well, there's a lot more to tell about CQB, but that would fill a bloody book. And I wanted to keep it short, actually, without going into too many details other than that Swiss gun. UBL got that typical double tap mark of a 9mm handgun. One in the head, one in the chest. Which you don't do with a fully automatic assault rifle, really. And because of the high cadence of CQB, you want to go in with the stopping power of a 9mm zig. Double tap, forget, next one. Whereas with a 223 assault rifle, you do a burst and see the tango still running. You will lose valuable time making you, vul making you vulnerable. UBS was, the UBL was killed with a 9mm Swiss gun, for sure. I fully understand that these Navy SEALs heroes want to stay anonymous with their masks on. I mean, who wants to be known for ambushing defenseless people in bed 
killing women and children. So you rather want to write your heroic Hollywood screenplay under a pseudonym using somebody else's name instead and then get rid of the child killing bestseller. Sounds more like Navy sales than Navy seals if you ask me. Well of course these are not Navy seals these are policemen but it's all the same thing. And I bet you Navy SEALs child killer heroes would also murder unarmed US civilians if you got the order to do so with that man in the White House enjoying your show in the TV room. And then your Navy SEALs would write a book about it anonymously. I know your Octagon State killers with your Swiss guns because I recognize that Swiss speciality of killing children and attacking the defenseless while they're asleep, preferably. So I'm more like showing the pictures of cops here because when those Navy SEALs and Special Forces are around, you know, killing people, there are not so many people around taking pictures, you see. See my video Warrior vs Soldier, I quote, A warrior defends the innocent and the children. A soldier murders women and children and then gets a medal for it, just like those Navy salesmen. So here the, uh, is my film on another channel and um, it's very nice. It put some things in it. I was only following orders. Um, uh, this is from a graceful watchman for Jehovah. Well done, mate. Good. Thank you for justice and the world and mankind. It was a real sitting duck shoot. The assassins came in the night when all were sleeping and murdered Osama's son Khalid. Here's another name. Only 20 years old and technically a child as the adult life starts at 21. They murdered an un unarmed woman called Bushra murdered Abrar al Kuwaiti, only 30 years old, and his father too, thus exterminating an entire family, father, mother and son, and leaving all those other children traumatized forever, seeing that Navy SEAL's bloodbath. So here it says how they, uh, the Navy SEALs, how they stormed the Abbottabad house. Uh, the uh, Bushra, the brother, uh, Bin Laden's 20 year old son Khalid, well, there are probably more sons, there's another name again. Um, so it was a real bloodbath, you know. So the other one, he's, she's limping from a bullet wound in her knee and she's suffering from psychological trauma. Well, nobody's talking about this, eh? It's just talking about what? Oh, about these Navy SEALs heroes. Bunch of child killers if you ask me. They're now heroes. Get out of here. So this is in the, uh, the New York Times. I'm putting in the link for you. And precisely today I'm doing this video about uh, what well, I've been working on it for a few days about Osama Bin Laden and it was not planned, you know. So today it happens to be 9-11, September the 11th, 2014 and 13 years after the false flag crimes and 13 is Isis, her number and victory over patriarchy chopping Osiris into 13 bits and pieces and exactly now executing the next witch hunt against the patriarch patriarchy also ISIS Islamic State. Today is Enkutatach, the highest pharaonic sacrificial festivity. This is synchronicity and the converging of powers and numbers. So this is on Veterans Today, written just after the murder on Osama and his children and the women. I haven't read the whole story, but I mean, it says enough. So even American soldiers 
I don't believe it anymore. I'm sorry what they did to you and your young children, Osama. You gave away a life in wealth for a life under very difficult conditions in caves and in shags and under in poverty. Um, because you wanted to help other people. I'm very sorry. This is definitely not an age for saints. MS-13 is a very dangerous Latino gang run, run by the US government. And that doesn't really stand for Mara Salvatrucha, but for Mason or MS. Just as when you see the number 13, they should ring a bell, very loud. Osiris was cut into 13 parts and on Friday the 13th of October 1307, a few Templars were burnt at the stakes and out of the Templars rose the Masons. Here you can see the, uh, the pyramid just like uh, at the, on the dollar, well, it's all about the dollar actually. And where the all-seeing eye is at the dollar is something very similar. It looks like an octagon. It's in fact more like homeland sick purity than anything else, if you ask me. Homeland sick purity. I mean, if there wouldn't be any police and any government the American people would wipe them off the streets in like three days. Gone, bye-bye forever. You know, not MS-13 forever, but bye-bye forever. So it's just as a mafia. It's, it, they're all Mason gangs, you know. So on the t in the top, they're real Masons. And I'll explain you why and how. That's why there's a pyramid. Imagine yourself Nazi Templar of Octagon in Afghanistan with one of your organization's branches called CIA, the Cocaine Import Agency, and sitting on top of all these bags of, full of opium. It's no problem getting the dope into the US of A because you control all logistics. But how get it on the streets back home? Well, you still have some contacts from Iron Gate, El Salvador and Nicaragua, some contrast from the other side too. Many of them already hate the US because of what America did in Central America. And during the 12 year civil war from 1980 to 1992, in which 100,000 El Salvadorians were murdered by governments uh, death squads and backed up with uh, weapons uh, and other things by the, U uh, the United States, the CIA and Israel and displacing one million people of whom most ended up in the United States. So there's no more respect and all psychological barriers gone, leading the way to distribute drugs to the American youth. So you found yet another Nazi Templar group called MS Mason 13 with your man on top dist distributing the dope, harvest the money and trade guns for what the, the gang members earned. And the interview by Ross Camp, also Blood and Crips admit they get the guns from the cops. Well this is Octogon and MS 13 is in fact very Swiss. No Agent Orange against poppy fields in Afghanistan, eh? Because Agent Orange is only against people and children. This is also why SEAL Team 6 Extortion 17 was murdered. Because they knew too much. First tortured, then cremated. To eliminate the physical evidence for forensics. Well, you don't need much forensics, though, to recognize some tormented faces with the mark of, e of agony imprinted all over their expressions, still visible after death, because of days of torture and waterboarding. The same for Osama bin Laden, this true saint who stopped the opium trade in Afghanistan, so they had him terminated. 
while Obama enjoyed the show in the White House TV room, live on TV, how a defenseless, unarmed old man gets assassinated and an entire family wiped out and gunned down with it of Osama's best friend Al-Kuwaiti and children shot to pieces by ultimate gun violence. And the next day he, Obama, goes on TV to brag about it and say there's too much gun violence in the country. I need to collect your guns. Now he, Obama, claims airstrikes to kill an entire generation of young Muslims who want to create their own Islamic State and not under US-British control or from some CIA dictator by the name of Saddam Hussein. Now using the argument for war and mass murder just because of one or two fake beheadings of some US journalists putting on his tough president face saying We'll revenge every American killed. And orders immediate airstrikes because of only two reporters. While many more unarmed American kids with their arms up get gunned down by their uniformed slaughter gang with their snipers and armored cars roaming American streets. So you don't really mean every mur murdered American. Hey, Mr. President, only when it suits your politics, eh? Hundreds of unarmed Americans get murdered by the police every year, like in, in the Swiss belt, Ferguson. So here's where the Air Force should focus its airstrikes, and not over there. And Obama is of Swiss descent, a Swiss American from a town called Ried, in the canton of Bern and the octagon fifth column sleeper cell. Just as this guy here who loves the motherland of all the confederates and never criticizes it. I want to see a Swiss system. Well, I want to see a Swiss system. Huh. Europe. I want to see a Swiss system. William Cooper says in his book Behold the Pale Horse the headquarters of the international conspiracy is in Geneva, Switzerland. The headquarters of the international conspiracy is in Geneva, Switzerland. Yes, Switzerland was founded by the Templars from Octogon, with all their no good NGOs in Geneva and that extraterrestrial thing called CERN in Geneva. And here in Central America and back where we started with MS Mason 13 megaliths, literally meaning big stones of the ancient aliens have been discovered with a Swiss cross on it. A perfect Swiss cross on a megalith and the megalith period is about five, between 5,000 and 15,000 before Christ. So what is it doing there? And like in a perfect circle, we are back where we started in El Salvador with the drugs trade and all the crimes going on. MS is Mason. Mason 13 with Swiss crosses. So if you want to see this video, here it is at 30, 31 minutes. And here's the channel name and this is the name of the film. And here's the Swiss cross. I haven't watched it. Only this here because somebody, a good man, sent it to me. A good person just sent it to me. This is incredible. This is what I've been telling you. I want to see a Swiss system. And the Swiss flag is the only flag in the world which is a square. Uh, you can see it compared with the other flag here which is long. The Swiss flag is a square. So, uh, 
So this country is being allowed a lot of things no other country in the world is. I want to see a Swiss system. And it's even protected under US laws. So here it says it's the uh, uh, USC 708, the Swiss Confederation Code of Arms. This is, it has equal arms and lines on a red ground. So, you know, if, if you make it differently, like in a, on, a, on a long cloth maybe or something, you go to prison for not more than six months, but at least for this damn flag of octagon, you go to prison. Because they rule the US. I want to see a Swiss system. And cold, heartless, extremely organized, always clean and neutral. They are indeed hiding everything from us. And oh yeah, Obama declared this week that Switzerland does not have to pay that $2.6 billion fine of Credit Suisse, the biggest fine ever to which a bank has ever been sentenced, or a small present to the motherland. Eh? Here you can read the entire article. So this was um, a few days ago on uh, um, September 12th. Well, that was yesterday. This is this is going on now. And this is in German. But here you can see that the London Business School has proven that the Credit Suisse. Um, until 2013, they spent about 15.5 million dollars for lobbying in Washington, so they wouldn't be sentenced, so they wouldn't be fined. And I thought some months ago, I thought, well, they did it, you know. Somebody, you know, fined the Swiss banks and the, the IRS, and the Swiss pleaded guilty for a U.S. court of law a month ago or two months ago. Uh, so they're not really, I thought, well, they're not really too big to fail. But uh, apparently um, Obama had already something else in mind. And uh, they're not going to have Switzerland pay for it. And this is what he probably thought. You know, when the IRS and the US uh, Justice Department worked so hard, you know, to get the uh, the Swiss criminal Nazi banks fined. This was his plan. I want to see a Swiss system. The Swiss Nazis and Octogon are responsible for that new Ebola outbreak in Africa. So the SVP Nazis of Switzerland can bring new restrictive laws into Parliament which allow them to close their borders from immigrants and using their newly built concentration camps to isolate all immigrants and use their recent 2013 laws of compulsory vaccination. Though Swiss Nazis have been doing this before, together with the South Africans, Walter Basson, the Basel Chemical Industries, and General Peter Regle of the Swiss Secret Service. The Swiss did it before, and now they did it again. This is well known and documented. Look it up. Here, here it says, White Nation Network. So it's already happening. They're the ones behind it. They, they, now they're saying all blacks out of the white um, countries and uh, you bring diseases and all that. So see my other videos about it. I'm not going to do it all again. The proofs are all there. Look it up. It's all documented. The Swiss did it before and now they did it again. Well, open up your eyes and stop this criminal country. So watch these films in my channels. I don't want to do it all again. So this is in my uh, this is in my in my channel 
Hat Safrat, the same channel here, Dr. Death and Octagon Switzerland and South Africa Apartheid Era Boss Operation Coast, the Black Bomb. This is Dr. Death and he was working together with the Swiss. The man known as Dr. Death says he was just following orders but as he fights to keep his medical license, the case of Wouter Basson is stirring up memories of apartheid era atrocities, including a germ warfare program that targeted black opponents of the white minority regime. And they were working with the Swiss. It's all here in my channel. It's all documented on the internet. They did it. So stop this criminal country in the Alps before they kill us all. So this is about the, um, it's in my other channel, Gure, it's on the, uh, the well, you, you can, I put in the links for you. It's about the Swiss plans to uh, murder immigrants in concentration camps. Here it says, one of, a guy of the SVP Nazi party, he wants to execute uh, asylum seekers in Swiss concentration camps and already building them. Ebola is Swiss made. They inserted it now in Africa to close down the borders and to um, all over Europe. Believe me. So in this on my same channel here it's about the mandatory vaccination in 2013 in Switzerland. Ebola in Africa closed down the borders, concentration camps, isolations of persons and uh, well they give you a shot and a, a vaccination on top it says either shot will kill you <laughs> probably does eh? so this is very important I repeat the Swiss are responsible for that new Ebola outbreak in Africa 2014 so the SVP Nazis of Switzerland can bring new restrictive laws into Parliament which allow them to close their borders from immigrants and using their newly built concentration camps to isolate all immigrants and use their recent 2013 laws of compulsory vaccination. Though Swiss Nazis have been doing this before Together with the South Africans, Wouter Basson, the Basel Chemistry, Chemical Industries, Dr. Death and General Peter Regli of the Swiss Secret Service. The Swiss did it before and now they did it again. This is well known and documented. Look it up. The Swiss plans to kill the entire black population in Southern Africa and maybe the entire Africa. Here he is, Reikli, Peter Reikli, together with Wouter Basson, Dr. Death. And, um, you know, they had a whole bunch of biological weapons and I tell you, the Swiss did it. No, they did it. They did it. They've got the hatred. You can see it in the... They're announcing it like the Nazis. In all the, the um, Nazi uh, pamphlets, you know, in the, uh, in the streets and in the, in everywhere. They did it. Believe me. Stop the Swiss Nazis now. Because nobody in Switzerland will stop them. And they won't stop themselves. Novartis of Basel, Switzerland is the biggest pharmaceutical company in the world. With annual affairs of $60 billion in 2013. And they're going to make a big buck out of the Ebola outbreak. First... They had their product, products Gleevec and Tessigna against Ebola ready in 2012. The next year, in 2013, they had new Swiss laws of mandatory vaccinations set in place. And yes, the pharmaceutical lobby is the biggest by far in Swiss Parliament. And again, one year later, in 2014, the Ebola outbreak in 2014 simultaneously presenting the Swiss Ebola vaccine Exelon. Well this is the itinerary of big crimes against humanity. Just follow the money and you get to Switzerland. 
Well, you can see the old article. Here there's Gleefec and Tesigna. And um, against Ebola. So first I had it all ready. The vaccine. The antidote. Then the Swiss new laws. So they can just give you a shot. And then the outbreak. In collaboration with the Swiss Nazis. Who who thought who who've been told that the Swiss borders are were going to be closed as an effect. There has always been that Nazi alliance with the Swiss pharmaceutical complex in the town of of the Bank of International Settlements, Basel, like with Auschwitz, the Nazis, Mengele, Doctor Death and the apartheid system, see my other vids. And here in the logo, it's three different things, you know, so that's Isis, Horus, and Seth. And it's also like the needle in an uh, artificial insemination, you know, like punching the egg. Maybe the way we were made, who knows. And the uh, Pyramid S logo of its predecessor, Sandoz from before the 1996 fusion. It's all pharaonic. So this is for Isis, Horus and Seth. And this is Seth, you know, the guy who, was, who, who came from up there with the needle and the injection, you know, of the, uh, of, of the genetics into the human egg here. And uh, Isis, the big one here, Isis and Horus, the little one. Um, being the uh, terrestrial results of the uh, celestial uh, imprint of uh, Seton or Satan, Satan, Sethon, Set, Set on. You see, it's all there. And now they're gonna do with the uh, the Ebola outbreak some more. Um, uh, Oh, you know, the Georgia Gatchstone things, you know, the ones they want to keep and the ones they don't want to keep. The same thing, actually, which is in the logo. You know, it's all about a farmed human race. Even farmers do it nowadays, you know, with cloning and, and you know, artificial insemination of a great bull. And so this is the injection by Sephon. And here's the human egg. Charming, isn't it? Yeah, it's all from Switzerland. Switzerland is entirely corrupt and under the influence of uh, of Nazis and their and their companies because they're all very very rich. You now they'll sell their grandmothers if they can get only like more votes and their particular interests. It's completely out of control and somebody should do something because they will never do it themselves. They also control the police, they control everything. And it's always been like this in this country here. Yeah? Nothing has changed. It's horrible. The map industries from California and their alleged actual Ebola vaccine antidote for the US is most likely a Novartis subsidiary of the Swiss multinational, which they do to block lawsuits, arrive at the core of the company. MAP Incorporated has only 95 employees, of, of whom 17, 72 researcher, researchers only. <laughs> and it can't be taken serious for researching an antidote for something as complex as Ebola. So if Americans are going to die from the new MAP vaccine against Ebola, the Swiss mother company cannot be held responsible in a court of law. Chiron in California is also a Swiss subsidiary of Novartis and the president has Swiss roots. See my video about it. Is fecit qui prodest. He or she who profits the most is considered to be guilty.